Well, everyone, thank you for watching, clicking on this video for session three of our Exodus uh, out of Catholicism. My name is Brother James at SOC, Simplicity of Christ. This is Brother Billy that joins, joins uh, channel tonight to talk about this very important topic and subject. Uh, you know, we're we're going to go as long as we can on this this topic of of uh, conception because it comes in various many many forms. Okay, and we want and this is our our testimonies uh, about coming out of Catholicism. It goes to show how our minds are so delicate. Our minds are very delicate as far as you know being deceived you know that's why it's, it's important to stay in the word of god that's important to word to read read the word of god for yourselves okay uh so I, I would like to i would like to talk about just for a brief moment we'll see where the conversation goes from here billy is the scripture that um that is used to prove or as a proof text for purgatory um, is First Corinthians chapter three, and I'm going to read in context here, first uh, eleven through, let's see, through fifteen. So let me try to pull this up on the screen here, folks. So be patient with me. I'm still learning this software uh, on the Zoom call, so I'm cutting my teeth here. Uh, so Billy, I'm going to attempt to pull this. That's First Corinthians chapter three, and we're gonna start in verse eleven. Okay, so as you can see here, we're gonna read um, First Corinthians chapter three. We'll start verse eleven, and we'll read down to down through fifteen. So as you can see, for for other foundation. Can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall, that's right here, the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is that's his work that's your 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 things you've done in this body after you're saved okay does that this, this does not say sin here this is your your work that you do out of a pure motive okay verse 14 if any man if any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon he shall receive reward he's talking about rewards in heaven here verse 15 if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself <sighs> shall be saved, yet so as by fire. So what they're, what they're saying is uh, he shall suffer loss, not, not loss of salvation, loss of rewards, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. So there will be people. So ask yourself a question. What if you, all your work is burned up? Maybe you've done some things, you know, out of a wrong motive, you know, after you were, you were saved, maybe you got, you were saved as a little boy and you grew up into, uh, uh into deception. Okay. Maybe you became a Calvinist or an Armenian uh, of a system, or maybe, you know, you turned to Catholicism or whatever system, religious system out there. Okay. And, and was doing works out of a wrong motive. Those works, what I see here. In my perspective, you know, read the scriptures for yourself, that those works will be burned up. But yet, the good news is you still will be saved. That's what the scripture is talking about. It's not talking about purgatory. It's not talking about sins. Okay, Jesus Christ took care of all the sin on the cross. His death, his burial, and his resurrection, his ascension on high. We trust that plan of salvation. Okay, you are, then, you, then you are saved and sealed forever, for all eternity. You can't lose that salvation. And that's very good news. It should be good news to your ears. Okay. So that's what I wanted to bring on those scriptures. Billy, you have anything regarding those scriptures or you have anything in mind? 
No, except that the Catholic Church gets its purgatory ideas, too, from, is it uh, Maccabees? Second Book of Maccabees? Yeah. Um, which, I, you know, that up. which is not, um, yeah, included. It's just interesting with, with the history of, of the of the of the Bibles in the English language. Very interesting. But there, there's if people don't think that there's a war on the word of God, they're in, they're in a delusion. Right. You know, um, to think that, oh, well, it's not coming through translations. This war is not coming like almost like if the devil. You know. Is not involved in. A conspiracy, right? right. You know, you, you always hear that. Oh, conspiracy. There ain't, you know, even on the news. Oh, a conspiracy. Then you're 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 kind of like labeled as a conspiratory or cons conspiratist. Right. Um, but but there's been a conspiracy since the day the devil wanted to be like the sure. most high, and he's not stopping. And so why would he not? St why is he stopping at when the word of God comes in? He's not, you know, going to try to come in and change it, right? You know, so you know. But anyways, I'm just saying the the you know the the second book of Maccabees. Um, does t is basically where kind of Catholicism gets its you know about praying for the dead. Okay, so let, so let's pull this up real quick. Let me do another share screen. We'll pull up what you, exactly what you're talking about. One moment. I, I think I found some information. But we'll, we can study so you can see for yourselves. Okay, I know it might be hard for you to see this, Billy, but I, I remember I sent you that link about the catechism, Catholic catechism. Yeah. Yes. So, so here I have on our screen, I know you're on, on an iPhone there. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. So I'm moving my, so here folks, um, Catholic Catechism 1031, it says here, it says the church gives the name purgatory, right here, church gives the name purgatory to its final purification of the elect which is entirely different from the punishment of the damned. The church formulated her doctrine of faith on purgatory, especially at the councils of Florence and Trent. You notice where they formulated it. It's not out of the Bible. Okay. The tradition of the church, get that, note that, the tradition of the church, by reference to certain texts of scripture, speaks of a cleansing fire. I just read to you about the cleansing. Uh, one of the texts they use, the cleansing fire, is for your works. Well, your works get burned up. Okay, that's this area right here. I have a, You can see my highlight text here. Okay, in the small print, let's read the small print. As for certain lesser faults, we must believe before the final judgment, here it is, there is a purifying fire. He who is truth says that whoever utters blasphemy against the Holy Spirit will, will be pardoned neither in this age nor the age to come. From this sentence, we understand that certain offenses can be forgiven in this age, but certain others in the age to come. All our sins were forgiven on the cross. Okay, the blasphemy, well, we, we will have to study that one time, Billy, the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. I, I see it shooting from the hip here. Please fact check. Do your own study, folks. Is that the the Ooh. blasphemy against the Holy Ghost is is rejecting Christ? You're rejecting the Messiah. All right. So here's where you're used saying the Maccabees. 1032 says this teaching is also based on the practice of prayer for the dead. Right here you go. Nowhere in Scripture says. In in the the Bible, the King James Bible, or any of your model translation doesn't doesn't read this. Already mentioned in sacred scripture. Therefore, Judas Maccabeus, that's your that's your Maccabees, book of Maccabees there, made atonement for the dead. That's this right here. I don't know about you, but Jesus Christ made the atonement for all sins, past, present, future. Okay. This should be a red flag to you that 
they might be delivered from their sin. Right here, that's the next part. Right here. Excuse my highlighter here. That might be delivered from their sin. From the beginning, the from the beginning, the church has honored the memory of the dead and offered prayers and suffrage for them above all the Eucharistic sacrifice, so, so that, thus purified, they may attain the beatific, beatific, that's a tongue twister there for me, vision of God. All right. The church also commends almsgiving indulgences and works of penance undertaken on behalf of the dead right there let us says let's let us help and commemorate them if job's sons if job's sons were purified by their father's sacrifice the small small fine print here if job's sons were purified by their sacrifice by their father's sacrifice why would we doubt that our offerings for the dead bring them some consolation let us not hesitate to help those who have died to offer our prayers for them. So, as you can see, that you're, they're setting up, they're setting you up for purgatory. They're saying that if we do indulgences and do the, the prayer, pray for the dead, that we can pray them out of out of some place that doesn't exist. That's either heaven or hell, folks. And you have to make that decision on this side of the grave, by the way, to to trust Christ as your Savior. Don't wait. Don't depend on this false teaching of purgatory. You know, I, I, I've done that before. I'm like, well, there's my second chance. You know, since I'm Catholic, you know, and I try to be a good person. And, I, and I've said that before. Oh, I'm Catholic. I'll just try to be a good person. You know, I'll go to purgatory, but, you know, then I'll be get prayed out, prayed out of that and go into heaven. That sounds very dangerous. I wouldn't take that chance. Scripture is very clear. Absence from the body to be present from the Lord. There's only two places you're going to go, Catholic friend. That's either heaven or hell. Make that decision now. And Jesus did the atoning. He's the only one qualified. He's the perfect Lamb who takes away the sin of the world. And He can He can He can pay your sin debt tonight if you choose to place your soul, faith, and trust in Him and Him alone. That is it. It's that simple. It's a simplicity of Christ that saves, and it's a simplicity of Christ that keeps us saved. Hence, my channel, that's my channel name, SOC, Simplicity of Christ. So, so you make that decision on this side of the grave. Just trust him. He paid everything for you in full. You are perfected in Christ already. So that's that's catechism right there. That's what we're reading. And anybody can look this up on the internet. Catechism of the Catholic Church. Line it up with scripture. Don't take our word for it. We're just we're just presenting you presenting you the, the, the facts that we see in our perspective of the scriptures. And 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 uh, or our perspective of the Catholic chasm in, in light of the scriptures. Let the scriptures illuminate. Shine in a dark place so you can see what you're looking at. So that's what I have for those scriptures there. First Corinthians, Billy. Yeah. Yep. Well, it's interesting that like in the, the King James, I mean, they don't have the this the book of Maccabees, the second book, first book, second book, I think there's two. Um that's where I was, you know, there is there is a war against the word of God and the devil comes to steal, yeah. kill and destroy. And it's, you know, uh, Guy Fox. I, I think that's how you say his name. Try to blow up, you know, King James. Uh, I think a year before he came out with the King James Bible. Um, very interesting. Tied to Catholicism. In that plot, I wow. you know, yeah, and it, that's fascinating, you know, and then. When you study Westcott and Hort, also tied to Catholicism with the new translations, um, there there is an enemy out there trying to distort the Word of God. Absolutely. Whether whether or not people want to believe it or not, I mean, you know, you you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Right. Exactly. Um. But that that whole 
you know, that whole, uh, you know, the Roman Catholic government, you know, um, the Jesuits, all that stuff. Um, I remember being in a, going to, uh, you know, um, I knew somebody that was involved with the Christian school and uh, they were getting their curriculum, you know, their, their school curriculum. And I was in the office and I looked on the box and it said Jesuits. Wow. You know, they were getting their curriculum from the Jesuits. And I thought, wow, anybody see this? Yeah. <laughs> talking years ago. Um, so there is a war against the word of God, you know, whether people want to believe that or not. I mean, you know, I, I know there is. Well, that's interesting. I want to back up for a second about your testimony when you were 19, Billy. Sure. It's interesting that, you know, as Catholic, we were forbidden to go to any kind of Bible study. I knew that. I was, yes. I was convinced. I was, I was forbidden right there. I was rebuked right there in, in the mass. Uh, one time, the, the actually the priest. I just remembered this. I went to a, a Bible camp of sorts, and and a friend of mine, Mitch, him and I. He was Catholic. Him and I went to visit this Bible summer Bible camp or whatever it was for a weekend, and and the father, the priest, found out about it, and he mentioned it and right there in the mass. He's by the way, there's some folks. He called it right out that. You should need to be careful when you go to these Bible groups and camps. We don't, you know, we, we kind of, he, he came down on us on that. I knew it was directed towards us, you know. And, but, but it was interesting that what, do you remember what made you went to, made you go to that Bible study? Was it, was it, <laughs> a, was it a Catholic Bible study or was it a non Catholic Bible study? No. How did you get involved with the Bible study? It was non Catholic. And, it was a friend of mine, um, a guitar player, because I was, you know, I was a drummer. Mm -hmm. And uh, his brother was was a Christian and doing doing a Bible study. And he asked me if I wanted to go. I said, sure. Yeah, I'm into it. I'll go. And it, it was it was actually it was a study on the, in the book of Revelation. So you remember the book and everything that must have been to remember the book and the details. That must have been a pivotal point in your life. Somebody, it, somebody has been praying for you, was praying for you to go, to get your eyes open, to be invited and you being willing. See, that's the thing. This is what I'm getting at, folks. You have to be willing to seek truth. As you hear Brother Billy say, I'm seeking truth. You know, he was seeking truth, obviously, or he would most people were, wouldn't dare to. Are, are, are closed minded say no I'm, I'm a Catholic I'm not going to that but you must have been seeking you must have been seeking yeah absolutely and you know what's very interesting James is I'm seeking truth now uh, we continue to seek truth. yes yeah, yes excuse me yeah I mean I found the truth the way in the life you know Jesus uh I I, <laughs> I remember this one preacher says you didn't find Jesus he wasn't lost you were he was, he was, he was, he was, uh, he was, he was, uh, he was into Calvinism. Uh, uh, yeah, right, but, right. But, but what I'm getting at is, um, yeah, I, I, I never stop. I mean, I see things on, you know, on commercials that most people won't, they don't get it. I can, for instance, you know, I, I, you know, like if you're watching a commercial and I'm thinking, man, that's satanic. They like, they, they, it's very interesting. I, I, I would say. Look at they're all in their red and black. Yeah. Red and black, red and black. Why are they in red and black? And then you see these, you know, um pop artists, red and black, red and black. You see people dressing in red and black. And I'm just, you know, people they don't I'm just saying I can see the writing on the wall. You know, this you stuff with the dividing art. line. I, I really yeah, you know, it's, you it's a the certain dividing thing. line, whether it's yeah. I know where they're going. I know where they're yeah. heading. You know, it's like, again, where's the end result? There's always an end result. Right. Tonight, when we're done, there's an end result where we're trying to lead people. Whether they want to, you know, 
follow or should I say listen to what we're saying and then go seek themselves and see what we're saying if it's true or not. This might be a seed. That's all we're doing, just planting seeds. It, you know, that's it. We're we're planting seeds in and trying to get people to seek the truth. Good. Right? Um exactly. So, you know, I never stopped. Yeah, I, I never right. stopped. Um yeah, that that I mean that was a pivotal pivotal spit it out. Pivotal. It's late. I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. Pivotal, pivotal. It was pivotal. It, it really was for me. And I, I can't I can't explain even my how things just changed. Like my even like my um my taste for music. When I mean by that, when I say taste, I mean spiritual taste. Mm -hmm. I couldn't get back. I couldn't get into listening to the to the cream. You know, uh the rock group. I mean, I couldn't get back into Jimi Hendrix. I mean, there was a point where I was I was like I it just it was like I don't want I don't want that spirit. It was like I was saying earlier, it's like when you when you want to serve God, it's like it's really out of your heart, but there's something there that um you just know by the Holy Spirit that that's his darkness. Right. That like I would like I was saying, like even seeing certain commercials, you know where they're going. It's dark. It's darkness. For sure. There, there's a certain spirit that, you know, I, I don't need that. I I just don't want it. Um and it's not even tempting. That's what's amazing. Some some things can be tempting, but what I'm getting at though, a lot of it's not tempting, where it is probably tempting to people that ain't saved or or fleshly, you know, involved in the flesh. You know what I'm saying? Well, um, I think you hit on something too. You said, you know, you 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 made a decision. You made a decision to yield to the Holy Spirit. When you yield to the Holy Spirit, He will lead you into all truth. That's the role. That's one of the roles of the Holy Spirit. He led you away. He led you away from. The Jimi Hendrix and the, 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 you know, I was a Guns N' Roses fan, okay? When yeah. I got saved, you know, it, it's very difficult for me to listen to Guns N' Roses. I don't listen to it anymore. I had I had a thought come in while you were talking about this. What's very interesting, though, that that pivotal pivotal night, I wasn't forced. I was set free. It's, 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 it's very, it was, it yeah. was. I, I wasn't, it's like, I was set free. And in that freedom, I didn't want that. It wasn't like I'm doing it because, oh, everybody else says it is. And it's, it's doing right. this and it's doing it. It was like, it was like freedom going, I don't want it. There was freedom in it. It wasn't like I was, I was forced out of a work. Like right. some kind of works where I'm I'm doing this work kind of thing to to get you know, approval or to stay away from it like that. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was it was automatic freedom. And it was like, That's no, great. I don't want it. I don't need it. I didn't want it. It's just it's wow. just it's it, it was just different. It was just different. And then then I, it was just like discern discernment came in. And. I, you know, my, 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 my oldest daughter will say, you know, that, uh, you know, I have the gift of discernment. I don't call it that. I just, I, it just automatically happened. I, it wasn't like forced. It was just, it was like, I mean, it's yeah. like coming out of a cave and it was like sunshine. And, <laughs> you know, it was just. It, yeah, and it, what does Jesus say? The truth will make you free. Make you free. It'll make you free, and it made me. It made me free. But that Catholicism still had its little tentacles trying to grab yeah. me and pull me back, and you know, superstition because I was so indoctrinated when I was so young. Wow. And then through all, you know, through you know, um, just yeah. What did yeah. your family say when you came out of Catholicism? Well, you know, it was it was kind of not accepted, but accepted. It was one of them things where they they were okay. Um, 
but you know they they didn't like my and this is interesting my dad's he's not alive now he passed away he he almost lived to 92 I mean, I love the man. Uh, I couldn't have had a better dad. Um, but I remember, um, you know, he he wasn't a churchgoer. My mom was the one who went to church. And then I found out he only went to, to the Catholic church um, because she went. He only right. went to church. And he, 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 you know, he was from the old school, you know, the... Uh, <laughs> They just didn't really talk a whole lot about religion, you know. It sounds like my it sounds the exact same thing about my parents. Exactly. But just this, this is very right. but this is very interesting. So I I worked with my my pop. Um I went into business with him. I had a chance to go to Milton Bradley in their R and D department, um, the the game company. And the housing was just kind of too expensive. They flew me out there twice, once with myself and then the second time with me and my wife and but anyways i came back um uh, and then my my dad says why don't you just come up here because he was into the same you know into modeling um mm -hmm. and i said sure i'll come up there but you know you have to get the tools that i want because i wanted to do a good job he said whatever you want so i said okay great so i i moved up and uh my dad was a great guy i mean everybody loved him um but he was just very closed minded but anyways, you know, a few months before he, he died, um, he was he was uh, in, you know, the like them, them homes that take care of, you know what I'm saying, like a facility. Um, and he was, you know, in there and I went to visit him and um, I pulled up the scripture in Romans, Romans 10. You know, if you believe in your heart, God, you know. Raise Jesus Christ from the dead, thou shalt be saved. I, Romans 10, what is that verse? I pulled it up, and I read it to him. And I was just really talking soft. And he, actually, you know, his hearing was kind of like, you know, kind of going. But I, I was talking, I talked soft. And I said, do you really believe? And he looked at me and he said, I do. Right. So you checked him on his salvation, on his, that's wonderful. But this is where I'm going with this. I came out of that room and I called my, called our, called our oldest daughter. And I says, I got to tell you what, today was the best day that I had with my dad in all my life. Wow. And it was, it was, it was amazing. And this is where I'm going with this. When, when he, he, we were all there. Okay. So the night before he died, I went over, me and my sister went over um, to my mom and my dad, because they, they brought him home and uh, he hopped into bed. And this is, this is really, this is, just means a lot to me. So um, he hopped into bed and guess what I did? I hopped right in there with him. Did you? And yeah. stayed stayed right by his side, and next thing you know, he turns around and he's grabbing and he grabs my arm, and then he settled down like he just that I was there, you know, it was amazing. He was, mm -hmm. he, was he was comforted a bit. I so I just I hopped right up there and I says, you know, I'm not, you know, he he was just a great pop, and then, uh, anyways, the next morning he he did pass away. Um, you know, I, and I was, I, I looked at him before he, he died and I says, pop, you're, you're saved. You're okay. It's good. And, um, Oof. and this is what's really interesting. So anyways, I seen him looking up, like, kind of like just before he was going to go, he like, like looking like something was happening, but you know, that's all I seen. And then, uh, after he, since my mother is Catholic and after he died, um, they called called in a Catholic priest, but I knew my dad. He knew, he knew, and I left the room. I didn't stay there when the priest came in and said, "Is I, I, I got to hold my tongue." I was going to say the BS right. word, but when he came in, um, I said, "My dad's gone. My he's not here. He's gone." He's and I had James. I had the greatest 
peace. I can't explain. I can't explain it. I can't explain it. I can't impart it on anybody except I walked out of there. It was a beautiful summer day and they're all in there with this. And I'm yeah. like outside by myself. And I'm thinking, you know, I'm, I'm not involved. You're rejoicing. I was rejoicing. And the thing was, you know how you like said you, how you separated, how you separated. I couldn't be in that room with that priest. My belief and my, my connection with God was so much greater than that garbage that was taking place he my dad was already safe and yeah. you know that and i knew that it was like my dad's safe it was i couldn't explain it except my dad's safe that's great and that is a true uh yeah that is that's, uh, that's great let's let's uh we're, we're, we're running out of time i don't want to i don't want this to be a hard cut off of course i just i just cut you off there but that's a wonderful testimony brother but um that's wonderful. That's a, it's this end on that one right there. That's a good place to end. Yeah, it is uh, a good place to end. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff. That's good stuff. So as you can see, it really means a lot, folks. You know, at the end of the day, you're gonna be you'll be someone's gonna be talking to you on your deathbed. And I pray, Catholic friend, that you have a, a somebody bold enough like Brother Billy to come and talk to you about are you at peace with God? Do you know how to be saved? It's the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ alone for your salvation. Believe. That's it. You believe on him. But anyway, good stuff here, folks. Uh, we're going to end this video tonight. Thank you, Brother Billy, for sharing that uh, sensitive moment there that you had with your dad. That's precious. And I'm glad we have it here uh, for you to share uh, with everyone how important it is, the gospel. But uh, we love you guys. We will be back soon with another uh, video, and we'll catch up to you soon. Bye for now. Good night.